Hello everyone, Corey Mitchell here with TradeThatSwing.com and this is your Swing Trading Stock Market Outlook for the week of May 6th. If you're ever looking for the updated version of this article, you can go under Stocks and Stock Market Analysis and Trades and it'll usually be up there on the, within the first few posts and get updated each week. So each week I just go through the same process, decides whether I'm going long, short, how aggressive I'm going to be. And heading into this week, conditions trying to recover, but you know we're still not quite in great shape. We have some health indicators that are good, some that are not so good. So we'll talk about that. Uh, the current watch list, the best swing trading stocks watch list for May, that was recently updated. Two lists, one very strong, one very weak stocks. Uh, so for potential long and short trades, high momentum. Current stock watch list, I haven't updated this one in a while since conditions haven't been good, but it'll look at specific setups that are forming or could potentially form shortly. And I, I've put these and some people ask, why do you have these longer term lists on the chart? We have the buy the dip stock list, the buy and hold stock list, the best long term dividend stocks. And the reason I have those on here is because I will often watch these swing trading indicators can also be used for longer term kind of investments if there's a good one you've been eyeing maybe a, you know a really solid company that got beat up the last couple weeks and you were looking to take a position once the health indicators improve and move into that positive territory then you know that's usually not a bad time to pick up some of those uh, stocks that we like for longer term trades as well so that's that's why i posted them here let's look at the price action that's going on you can see we've had that that drop in april so this is the nasdaq the nyse composite the russell 2000 the s p each kind of focusing on a little bit different segment of the market oh i have the futures up here since i like watching the price to see how it is in the morning but uh yeah the s p 500 index or the futures are fine and then the canadian index over here we'll talk about bitcoin and gold a little bit after so we had this fall in April and we are trying to recover. We're about 10 days into this rally. 11 will be on Monday. Typically rallies tend to, if it's going to falter, it usually falters about 10 days in or less. So you get you know a little pop and then six, seven days in, it starts to roll over if we're going to the downsides. This is a decent sign that we've kind of held up for 10 days. And if Monday's positive, that would also be uh, you know another good thing. So we're trying to recover, but we you can see we st are still in this pullback. We had a bigger drop. The other thing I noticed is uh, looking at price action, when we've had an extended uptrend and then we get the biggest drop we've seen so far, especially when the uptrends lasted a while, that's usually a sign of choppy trading or a little bit bigger decline. So this little bit bigger than these other declines that we've seen during this rally. So that's not ideal. Um, could be choppy for a little bit. So that's one warning sign. We also have a bit of a conflicting factor when we get to the market health indicators. We'll talk about that. So, but overall, just trying to recover in a pullback. And so we're not in an ideal, nice, beautiful uptrend. We are in a pullback. So that's gonna make me a little less aggressive on the long side, obviously, even once the market indicators turn positive. Um, Bitcoin here, you'll remember a few weeks ago, I had talked about how, or actually each week I've talked about how the price tends to whipsaw around prior highs. And then kind of right near the time that we made this high, I talked about this low here, the 59,000 and we finally breached it. We'd kind of got close to it a couple times, but we didn't quite breach it. And Bitcoin, like any market, sometimes likes to have these false breakouts below, and then we've pumped right back in. So we don't know if we're going to continue higher, shoot higher just yet, but we have had that false breakout below 59. So I did add some of my position back. Um, been long for quite some time. Got some off at 69,000, the old high and then added a bit back here on Friday as we started to move back up into this old range. So overall, I like this. These patterns have resumed to the upside on prior occasions, but we don't know if that's gonna happen this time, so always manage your risk. And 
you know, however you're, however you're viewing this. If this keeps dropping, then I will take my exit. Gold and the miners. You can see gold just kind of continued down last week. The miners made a little bit of a higher low here, so showing some resilience compared to gold. Uh, since I mainly focus on stocks and I don't trade the actual commodity, that's a little bit interesting to me. You can see we went from a rounded top here. We have a little high here, a higher high here. We dropped to a new swing low here, made a lower high here, and then continued to the downside, but that quickly failed. And now we have a rounded bottom, a little low here, a lower low here. We had a little swing high here, then a higher swing high here. So you can see this kind of u shape smiley face forming. So if this continues to the upside, uh, possibly some good trades, but um, I would really just want to see some of these names, individual names on my stock watch list. So unless those happen to come up in my scans, then I probably won't be uh, participating in this. It's been a little bit choppy and this pullback is getting a little more complex, showing a little bit um, I prefer these ones where it just pulls back and then it, it bounces very quickly like a tennis ball just bouncing off the pavement and the fact that we've kind of you know continued to trickle down starts to make me question it's just not my ideal kind of trade so uh, yeah unless a gold miner pops up on my scan list that really has a nice setup then probably won't be doing too much with this Let's look at the market health indicators. So this is the S&P 500 chart, and then we just have a few indicators that I like to look at. The This is how many stocks, per, the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average. The red is the S&P 500. The turquoise bluish line is all US stocks. And you can see less than 50% for both of those, the index and all US stocks are below 50%. And it's just, I found generally tougher to make money when, you know, this is below 50 on the long side because most stocks are not moving up. You can see these prior times when it's been below, we tend to get, maybe we get a little rally, but it tends to be uh, a bearish time or when it's just fluttering around that 50 line, we tend to get sideways movement. Even in here, this all US stocks was fluttering around 50. The S&P was crawling up, but as you probably noticed, there was just a lot of stocks. You know, they'd form a nice setup, but they just weren't really running a whole lot during this final stage, and that's because momentum was starting to die off. It was more of a flattish uptrend as opposed to these really strong moves which were happening earlier in the trend, and then these got much more choppy, you know, move up one day, barely make any progress fall back for a couple days, move up a little bit, barely make any progress. And a lot of the stocks, which, you know, 80% of them follow the index, so we just weren't getting those big, robust breakouts like we were earlier in the rally. Volume, we did have the possibility of a follow-through day. So I was looking at volume here. You can see it didn't quite get... Uh, above the prior day, so we had, uh, what was this day, up 1.26%. So that's you know a pretty small follow-through day, even if it had occurred, but it would have had to occur on higher volume. A follow-through day is just when we are early in a recovery after a pullback, it's kind of the signal that says, hey, buyers are coming in, and that's a good thing, and usually marks a bottom but we didn't get one on the S&P. We did get one on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ moved up 1.99%, so almost 2% on Friday, on higher volume than the Thursday. So that was a follow through day on the NASDAQ. So signaling a potential bottom there. The problem is, is that it occurred 10 days into the rally. That's generally a weaker signal than if it occurs between about four and seven days into the rally because you want those buyers coming in, you know, really enthusiastically early into that rally. The fact that it kind of took them so long doesn't super bode well. Like it, it's a very weak follow through day, I would say. Uh, I didn't even put it on the chart here that it came up on NASDAQ because it's just kind of like, I gotta wait and see on this anyway. We have one indicator that's not great. Um, 
only on one index we got the follow through day it's just not ideal this indicator is still good this is just the percentage change in the S&P 500 per day and uptrends are marked by no big downside days you don't get those really big drops of like 2% in a day whereas you can see back here in 2022 at the tail end of the bear market you have these you know big drops big volatility and you can see we've we've been kind of quieter I don't care too much about this upward line I just kind of do it to show low volatility but what I really care about is this when we get two percent down days that just tells me to back off for a couple days and we haven't had any of those in like a, a year um, or more so that still indicates uptrending behavior so I like that the, this is the NYSE advanced decline line, advancing stocks minus de declining stocks as a cumulative number. The version I have here made a new high on Friday above this prior high. I checked a couple other websites and it, it depends a little bit on when the calculations start. And so we get slightly different numbers on you know one site's version versus another. And the other ones I saw are very close. Uh, this was the only one I saw that made an actual new high. Uh, I think the fire prior high was around 1489 and we're at 1491 right now. So this one made a new high. When that happens, it indicates that the S&P will make a new high within the next few weeks. Uh, in very high percentage of the time. The, the fact that some of the other advanced decline lines haven't quite gotten there but are, are near the high, I would still say that's fairly favorable. That's a, what we call a bullish divergence in that sort of under the hood, stocks are moving up, even though the indices aren't necessarily uh, fully reflecting that. And so, yeah, when this happens, we usually see the S&P also hit its high because this has hit its high. This generally hits its high within relatively short order. Uh, we're not that far away, so that's not a huge uh, stretch to imagine that could happen. But that does kind of conflict somewhat with that other thing I was talking about with the price action is that we've had this bigger decline, much bigger than kind of what we've seen in this rally, more similar to what we saw over here where the price did end up chopping around for a while. So with this in place, we kind of have to counterbalance these two things that we're looking at. So we've had a bigger decline. This thing saying, well, we're probably going back to the highs. That doesn't mean that we'll just continue shooting higher. It just means that we could get to that high and we could chop around for a while. We don't know. So there's still, there's some good signs out there. There's some cautionary signs. What does that tell me to do? It just says be very conservative if you're going to trade at all. Or in my case, I'm likely not going to add any new uh, swing trades for a couple days. Just see what happens. This is up volume divided by total volume. When we have extremely low values, it indicates very high selling pressure. When you have extreme upside values, I'm looking at like this 90, this upper black line here, then that ex indicates extreme buying pressure, which is good. And we haven't had any signals recently, so this is just a neutral thing going on. So you can see a little bit of, based on price action, based on the indicators, we're, we're mixed. And if you think of conditions being ideal that's when you want to be hundred percent deployed when conditions are really poor you don't want to be going long at all so we're just kind of starting to improve and so I'm not really adding any positions yet but if we start to improve a bit more maybe I'd start adding like a little bit of capital into the market but not fully deployed because that's that's for when conditions are deal so it's always this kind of sliding scale between uh, poor and really strong and we're kind of allocating our capital depending on uh, where we are on that spectrum. Sectors on the move. Uh, I mentioned up here I don't really trade utilities or consumer defensive. If one happens to pop up on my list maybe I'll trade it if it's really strong but generally they're a little bit slower movers and I want the quick fast high momentum stocks. So I'll typically avoid those so kind of excluding those we have Consumer cyclicals good last week. Technology up there. Uh, so I like those ones. Consumer uh, communication services. 
uh, high are on the one month uh, consumer cyclical. Yeah, I mentioned consumer cyclicals, technology, communication services, high on the one month and on the three month. So, you know, kind of looking at all three of these, these are the ones that I'd probably be a little bit more leaning toward. Communication services was a little bit weak over the last week, but it's been really strong over the last one month and three months. So these seem to be the ones that are kind of performing the best on all three time frames, but nothing's a super standout at the moment where it's just, we know this is going higher. Uh, even basic materials, which have been strong, and the gold kind of stocks, they've, you know, they're kind of hanging out on the lower end of some of these lists okay over the last three months but not performing as well recently as we looked at those charts moving lower for the miners and gold uh so nothing a, a super standout there's not a ton of easy money I, I mentioned i like the bitcoin at the moment if it continues to go up but in terms of stocks yeah nothing really standing out to me at the moment so that's just another kind of a little bit of a knock against the the market and why i don't want to be aggressive is i, I prefer you know getting in when it's kind of more easy money conditions are good there's some um, really high quality sectors which are moving very well and right now we just don't have uh, those things so what am i doing right now well no long trades yet I'm not really going short either because we're kind of on the cusp of having good conditions bitcoin i had mentioned adding some last week uh, gold related etfs and stocks if we start moving up in those gold stocks that could be a decent trade but I'd uh, yeah I'd have to find some actual quality setups that I like and I just haven't been uh, looking lately <clears throat> and then there's always the option to day trade of course that provides a little bit more of a steady stream of trades as you can see with the swing trading there's sometimes periods where we don't have any trades because we're just waiting on market conditions to improve whereas the day trading we can generally find something every day so that's your market outlook for the week of may 6th have a great week out there